Hi everyone and welcome to this session on AutoCAD structural detailing and Revit structure. Now what we're going to do in this session is create uh, a non-standard structural object. We're going to create a slab. We're going to create slab edges and a local thickening. Take that through into AutoCAD structural detailing, reinforce it and then take the uh, 2D drawings back into Revit structure. Now on the extensions ribbon you can see that we have various reinforcement macros that will reinforce standard structural objects. Um, that's all well and good but of course as you know most structures aren't standard so what I'm going to do is take you through a workflow that will allow you to draw anything you like in Revit structure take that into ASD and reinforce it. So we're going to start off by generating um, a floor slab. So we go to uh, slab here we'll just create a boundary now I'm not going to be too fussy about sizes I'm using here so that will be fine for that and then we'll finish that. Now what I am going to do is put some uh, tags on this so we'll tag the slab so we can see what it is there and we'll also uh, put on a spot elevation as well. Okay so we have a level, we have our slab type, span direction symbol and so on. If we go into the 3D view here, let's just uh, shade that up. What we'll do is we'll get on our slab edge. So I have a slab edge already defined that I'm going to use. It's just a, a boot on the edge of the slab. So we'll put that right away around the edge, like so. You can see what we've now got. And we're going to create an in-place component. So I'll go to modern in-place here. We'll choose floors as a category. and I'll set a work plane. So I'm going to pick a plane here, we'll pick that face, we'll look at the elevation here and I'm just going to take us into wireframe mode so we can see what we're looking at and we'll now start to model our local thickening. Okay so that's the shape I want. Um, what we'll do, we'll get some dimensions on that so we'll have a dim on here Obviously we can drag that around to, to get what we want. That would be fine for the moment. Now what I want to do is make sure that this is parametrically locked in as well. So I'm just going to basically lock those settings in. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to link the material through. So I'm going to create a parameter in here and we'll call this material. And then we'll finish the model. Now if I go into the uh, ground floor plan, there's our thickening. We'll lock that to the opposite end of the slab and we'll make sure that's locked in there, which it is. And we'll set the material type. So I'll match that in with everything else. I'm just using C40 there. And I'm going to now join that. Yep, so I can join that in. Okay, now obviously in Revit structure, if I take some sections through. So let's just take a little section through there, make that 1 to 10. Yep, you can see we have a nice monolithic structure there. Right, so what we want to do is now take this slab, let's shade it up again, we'll take this slab out um, as an ACES file. So we go to Export, CAD Formats, and I'm going to take it out as a uh, SAT file or an ACES file. So I've saved this on my desktop as uh, slab.sat and that's now gone out. Okay, so what we're going to do now is switch into Structural Detailer. So we're now into uh, ASD. I have some other videos if you want to know the basics of Structural Detailing. But what I'm going to do here is just type in ACES in on the command bar and we'll pull the SAT file in. So now Revit, uh, sorry, AutoCAD Structural Detailing has actually brought in this SAT file. What I'm going to do is union the solids together. So I just type in UNI on the command bar, yep, down here. We'll select the geometry, and now that's actually created uh, a solid file from that. Now, if you now switch from ASD Reinforcement to ASD Structured Elements, we have a tool here, yep, which is going to allow us to create a, a, a model out of the 3D solid. So I'll choose an uh, element type here, we'll call this slab1, and we'll select the object. 
Now, it's going to ask me for the positive uh, insertion point, positive on the X and the Y, which I'll just pick off there. And straight away, if we go into a plan view, we can now see that Structural Detailer has created, created a full set of drawings for that. OK. If I regen that, you can see all the hidden detail that's been generated. Now, these are actual proper live sections. So you can see here we have a section. If I change the depth of section or the position of section, it will obviously update what I'm looking at down here. So let's uh, start by reinforcing this. So we'll go into uh, links here in cross section. And we'll get a basic link in. So we'll have that as a H10. Now we'll get our first link in here and tag that, like so. And then what we'll do is we'll create a U-bar. So we'll sketch this in, and I'm going to use points in this case here. Something like that. Now, what I want to do is actually be able to uh, edit the leg lengths on that. So we're going to uh, modify here. And I can use this tool here, Lengths of Reinforcement Segments. So here, I'm going to say I want that to be uh, 800 there. This is also going to be 800 on the leg there, so they're the same. And I'll accept the 165 there. Now, I don't really want hooks there, so I'm I can modify that. And I can actually get rid of the hooks. And there's our... There's our bar, and you can see here we have the bar mark shown as well. Right, so what I want to do now is distribute that around the edge of the slab. So up here, I can choose distribution. I'll pick the U-bar first, and I'm going to do this around the polyline yep, over here, and say OK. So we'll now just pick off the points, like so. I won't do the whole thing, we'll just do a small section of this. And you can see I've got three pages here because I've got three sides of the slab. So I can put in my spacings. So let's say we've got 150 spacing there. Um, we've got 28 either side there. If I decide I want more cover on that, I can actually just balance that out. So we might sort of just get rid of one link there and we can then balance that to what we want. So now I've got 40 either side, which is fine for that. And obviously I could continue through and iterate through that. Let's uh, make these all 150, like so, and we'll say OK there. And I'm going to now select the bars I want to actually show on the drawing. So I want to show this one here, and we'll put our mark in. This one here, and also I'll show this one here. Yep, and we'll put our tag out, so you can now see we have that tag shown and there's our drawing. Now, what's actually going to happen is all the sections will actually update and actually show that new bar. Also, of course, I could now start to put in uh, mesh reinforcement as well. So we'll go to wire fabrics here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just pick off the region. So we'll work around this. Now obviously you could do this on a separate view rather than having it every, everything on the same uh, view as, as it were. So that's that. Um, we'll say OK there and you can now see it's actually showing all of the sheets. So let's choose what we want to go and use. So we'll use 393 there. This is the size of the sheet. Um, these are the uh, laps that we're having over the sheet. Obviously I could uh, change the distribution pattern there. And I'll go ahead and just add that in and accept that. Now, what you have to do to get the sections to update, to actually show the mesh, all you need to do is uh, go and find the section. So this is section C here. And we can just rejig that. And straight away you'll see that ASD now shows that Y fabric in section. And of course I could continue with that. I'm just going to create a table. Yep, so you can now see I have my bar sizes in there my shape codes that ASD is automatically uh, recognized from that and the leg lengths and it's all working to British standards. We could also do the same for uh, Y fabric as well so if I go to Y fabrics main table yep, you can now see I have all of the uh, uh, 393 sheets that I've actually used in there. We also have summary tables as well 
So if I go for a bar summary table, straight away here I get a um, total weight uh, and length that I've used of each bar. Okay, so if that's what we want, what we can actually then do is generate drawings from that. So if I go into my uh, sheet here, we can very easily add these to printouts as blocks. Yeah. So I can just come along here, add that in where I like, up there, obviously I can move that, rescale it and so on. Now obviously the end game here is to actually get this information back into Revit structure. So I'm going to save this. I'll put it on my desktop and I'll just call this uh, RC like that. Now, if I switch back into Revit Structure, oops, let's just do that again. What we're going to now do is create a new drafting view. So we go to View, Drafting View. I've changed my scale in here. And now I can actually link that drawing through. Now, of course, if you link the drawing view, uh, the drawing, any changes you make to the drawing will actually update in uh, Revit structure. So we'll bring that in. Okay, it just takes a few seconds. And now you can actually see we have that same drawing actually linked through and imported in. And of course now, any changes I actually uh, make to, to the ASD model will actually update Revit structure. So a pretty interesting, neat workflow. Okay, hope that's been of use.